Hey guys, this is Goldie and in this video, I will show you how you can restrict your corporate users to be able to create Google consumer accounts. And I know you might have this question on why you need to do that. And for that, let me share my screen and present you a few slides to answer that and some other questions. So here are my slides. Now let's start with understanding that there are two ways to create Google accounts. First one is Google managed or work accounts, uh, which is recommended uh, for you to create if you're using Google services for your business. However, there is a second way, which is to create Google unmanaged or Google consumer accounts. So if you have, uh, you know, created Gmail account for your personal life, you might know that instead of using at gmail.com, you can also use your corporate email address for that. For example, if I have the domain, which is goldierora.com, I can go to Google account page and I can say my email is abc at goldierora.com. And then I can create a Google account with that corporate email address, which is not recommended because Google consumer account, the data that you would have in those accounts will belong to that user, that individual and not to the business or the company. Okay, so now because you understand that you should always go with the first option, especially when you're using Google services for your business, your question might be how I can make sure that nobody from our company can create the consumer account. And that's what this video is all about. So for that, uh, before I help you understand your options, let's understand how the consumer account gets created, the second option one. So first, the user will simply go to Google account signup page where user will see an option which, which says, instead of at Gmail, use my current email address, where your user will put like your company domain email address, and then Google will send a six digits verification code on that email. Your user will go to the corporate email, copy that code, come back, paste that code, and that is it. Your user has just created Google consumer account, which he owns, including the data in it, on your corporate email address. And that's what we are trying to stop in this video, okay? Now, let's talk about options to restrict it. Essentially, there are two options, okay? The first option is that you pre-provision or you know you proactively provision all your you know company employees into google work accounts or into google workspace or maybe google cloud identity uh, which essentially means let's say if i have 2000 people working for me i will take all of those 2000 emails and create work accounts okay which means when any of these 2000 people go to Google and try to sign up for a consumer account, they will see an error saying this account already exists in Google. So you should better log in with that uh, credential. OK, so they won't be able to create it. That's the first option. Now let's talk about the second option, which is to block the verification email, because when you looked at the uh, the email verification flow, the email that comes to you or that user goes based on your domain's MX records or mail exchanger records. So if we can somehow break that specific flow, then the user will not get that specific email and won't be able to provide verification code and hence email uh, account won't be created. Okay. Now you might be asking which option you should go with. And for that, I've created this little uh, options comparison here and I'll then give you my recommendation too. But there are a few uh, things that you should consider. Number one, uh, the first option, it's uh, it's a bit, you know, uh, difficult to configure. For example, if you have 2000 users, you, uh, you know, either will need to create them at once via CSV, or you might need to use Google's direct sync utility to sync everything from your Active Directory or LDAP to Google. However, in block verification email, it's pretty easy to configure in that all we need to do is just create one email rule on our messaging server. And that is it. 
Now, easy to manage, I would say the first option is not easy to manage because if new people join your organization, you will need to make sure that you take that user and provision that to Google. So you will keep on maintaining it, which makes it a bit hard to manage. But the email verification rule blockage, that is it just created, you don't need to manage it. Uh, in terms of cost, now you will need to, you know, when you provision users in Google proactively, you will need some sort of licenses. And one of those licenses is called Cloud Identity License, which is offered for free to up to 50 users. You may be able to request more users. And if you get it, then, you know, the solution might work for you for free. Otherwise, you will need to purchase those licenses. However, the block verification email, no hassle, just configure it, invest some time, and it is free because it's just an email uh, routing rule. And then the final one is probability of error. I would say in the first option, you have it every single day because a user joins in today, your organization, and then let's say you have a directory sync in place, which, which is scheduled to be running every four hours. So within those four hours, this specific user who just joined your organization and got email on your maybe Office 365 server can go to Google and create that account. Okay. However, in the block verification email, uh, the probability of error is very less. It's once in a while. This rule will only stop working if Google changes the metadata of the email, which we will be targeting. And I'll talk about it in a few minutes. So if you, you know, you, you can decide which one works out for you, but my recommendation will be to go with the second one. And uh, now let's talk about uh, how we can restrict uh, users to create Google consumer accounts in case if you're using Google Workspace and then I'll show you how you can do that if you're using Office 365. So if you're using Google Workspace as your messaging uh, solution, you're all set. You don't literally need to do anything. For example, let's say you have 2000 people working for you. You create their user accounts in Google. Now, when somebody goes to Google consumer accounts on a page, try uh, to get an create an account, that person will see an error saying this user already exists. So you should better log in than creating an account. But let's say if somebody else, maybe out of these 2000 tries to create a consumer account, that person won't be able to receive an email because that person actually does not exist on your Google workspace account or tenant. The only way for this person to receive email is to have some sort of catch-all account, which will usually be with admins. So intentionally, it's not possible uh, to create unless your admin really wants to try things out and you know create one or two consumer accounts. So to summarize, if you're using Google Workspace, either directly where your uh, MX are pointing to Google Mail servers, or maybe you have some sort of inbound gateway like Proofpoint, which sends the emails then to uh, Google, you are covered in both the scenarios, okay? So if this is your case, you can skip watching this video. But now let's say if you're using some other messaging server like Office 365, how will that work? What I'm gonna show you will work on any messaging server till the time it provides capabilities to do some sort of uh, rule-based triggering on your email server. And for that, let's look at the metadata of the email that is being sent when you try to create a consumer account. And we will look at these four uh, points here. Number one, the sender is no reply at google.com. The subject says verify your email address. In the body, you will see verify this email is yours as a string. And finally, you will see the last one, which is six digits random code. Uh, so what we will do here is we will go to our Office 365 and we will create an email rule which will say these four conditions, which means if the sender is no reply at Google and if the subject is verify your email address and if the body includes verify this email is yours and if the body includes six digits code, then take the action which will be, you know, redirect that specific email to somebody else. So instead of going to the actual person who tries to create that account, that email 
will now go to somebody else, maybe a dedicated mailbox, maybe an admin account, you can choose it. Now, I have uh, made sure to put and here because we want to avoid false positives and only trigger that rule if we are pretty sure that this actually came from Google. Okay. So with that, let me share uh, my Office 365 console and show you the live demonstration of it. Okay, so let me show you that rule in my Office 365 admin console. So for that, I'll go to my Exchange console and under Exchange, I'll go mail flow and I'll show you the rules here. And you will see that I have this conflict rule. If I edit it, uh, you will see this rule, okay? So if I maybe enter the full screen here, you will see that the rule says, I mean, put whatever name you want, but the rule says, apply this rule if the sender is no reply at google.com and, and the body or the subject includes verify this email is yours. The subject matches verify your email address and last, but the most important one I will say is if the subject or body matches this regex which essentially uh you know will capture or trigger when there is a six digits code in the email body and i'll put that regex i mean you can just look at it it's small one but i will also put that in the description so that you can just copy and paste it now in case if all the conditions match then the action should be to redirect message to a choice of your user email address. In my case, I'm redirecting these emails to my Office 365 admin address. Uh, you can maybe redirect to admin or any dedicated mailbox. Now, one thing that I really wanted to show you is when you click on this plus to create a new rule so that you can restrict your users to create Google consumer accounts, make sure you click on these more options here otherwise you won't see those uh, options to put multiple conditions but when you click on more options you will see an option to add conditions so that you can have multiple uh, conditions in your rule now with that let me show you how this rule will actually stop our users to create their consumer accounts okay so i'm in my office 365 admin console here and as you see i have a few active users when I click on this Google consumer account user that I created for this demonstration, you will see that consumer AC at my domain, that's this uh, user's email address. Uh, and I will take this to demonstrate our scenario. So first, let's do one thing. Let me copy this email address from here. Okay, and uh, from one of my Google workspace mailboxes, I will send an email to this saying, uh, test email, okay? When I click on send, hopefully that user should receive our email in his Outlook because I'm logged in with that same account here. So come on, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have got our email here, okay? Which means this email box is working fine. But now when this user tries to uh, create Google consumer account, that email shouldn't come here, but essentially that email should be redirected to the admin account that we mentioned in our rule. So with that, now let's go and create Google consumer account. So we'll simply say test user instead of Gmail, we will say we have our own email address, which is our Office 365 user email. I will put password here and click on next and it says that it has sent a verification email to this email address let's go back uh, in our outlook we don't see anything yet and ideally we won't if our rule works fine and we will also go to our uh, another our admin account because that's where this email is supposed to be coming because of that redirect in place that we have so if i go to outlook you will see that we have got this email here instead of going to that specific user and that's because of the rule that we have in place okay so i waited for like three four minutes so that i can show you the message trace as well so you understand what 
went behind the scenes. So if I go to my mail flow and look at message trace and let's start a new trace for that specific user, which is a consumer AC at my domain and I do a quick search. Let's look at the latest one. And here you will notice that the sender is no reply at google.com, which we expected as the recipient was our consumer account who tried to create a consumer account. However, instead of being delivered email to this account, it was delivered to our admin account. And that is because if I look at the message events here, because it triggered our conflict rule, the conflict rule that we uh, created, uh, which had our conditions and a redirect. So it seems our rule is working as expected. Okay, so I hope this was helpful and it will help you restrict your users to be able to create Google consumer accounts with your corporate email addresses. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, as usual, do not hesitate and put that under this video and I'll be happy to collaborate. With that, thank you so much.